This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha, I'm Marcia Joyner, and this is Community Matters. And today, well, we are in the middle of another major storm. And since May, I think it was, the big island, the island of Hawaii, uh, has had a constant, I mean constant, disruption in their lives. So today we are going to talk to one of the representatives from Puna, and that is Joy Sanbuena Ventura. Did I get it right? Yes, you did, Marcia. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us. So tell us about Joy. Uh, we know you're a representative, but tell us, because, you know, here in Honolulu, we talk to all of the ones from Honolulu, but we don't get a chance to talk to representatives from neighbor islands. So tell us about Joy. Okay. So, so Marcia, I have been a practicing um, country lawyer for over 30 years. I have represented families um, most recently. Prior to my being elected, I had also done some appellate work where I have taken cases all the way up to the Hawaii Supreme Court. But basically, I, I represent families. I've been a practicing attorney for over 30 years. I have volunteered as a mediator with Kuikahi Mediation. I have volunteered with a um, self-help clinic over here on the Big Island as well as um, some arbitration work. And I was a part-time judge um, back when I was 29 years old uh, for a period of five years. And that was, I was the youngest judge at the time. I would think so, and yeah. Basically, I decided to become a representative for Puna because I felt they needed representation at a time when our prior representative I felt was ineffective because um, she was immersed, immersed in scandals. Um, oh dear. Had it not been for the scandals, hopefully she would have been more effective. And, I'm, and I hope I have made a difference since I've been elected uh, four what, years ago. What committees are you on? Okay, right um, I have been, frankly, I've been very lucky in that I was vice chair of judiciary, and as you know, that's Ooh, one that's of a the big one. <laughs> top tier um, committees in the state house. And I have been also a member of transportation recently, as well as housing. Now, um, that's, yeah, well, I meant transportation and housing are issues on each island. I was wondering about, are there any issues that are, other than the volcano, that are definitely endemic to um, the big island that say we don't, on Oahu, don't have the same issues? Are there some issues that are definitely yours? The, the big island, that is. Okay, so what the big island simply because of its size okay it's twice the size of all the other islands combined simply because of its size a lot of the issues that are in oahu are magnified for instance the roads because we are relatively sparsely populated that we but we have the most we have the most roads because we just have we're just bigger, mm. and but because we're sparsely populated, we don't have the tax base to maintain those roads. So ah. we have a huge um, road maintenance as well as mass transit problem because our tax base is small compared to the size mm. of the island. So uh, recently in the last session, for instance, what Oahu does, didn't quite realize was our um, social workers had to cover these vast distances 
in between all of the various foster children, that the amount of time they have traveling because of the vast distances takes up like the, their entire, entire day. day. I would think make, so. Just to visit each child in every foster home. And so, what, um, yeah, what so about, we did a pilot yeah. project at the last session to limit the amount of children that for each caseload that so that the social workers would be able to spend more time on their cases rather than just going traveling on the road. Well, tell me if, when we're talking about that about the um, medical care in in so many rural areas. It's it's one thing in a populated a metropolitan area, but you have so many rural areas. What what happens with medical care? Do you have sufficient everything that goes along with medical care, hospitals, clinics, ambulance, those kinds of things? Do you have enough? Uh, no, and because of, of the size, and you know, one of the things I, I, one of the reasons I insisted on being a transportation committee, um, in, in transportation committee is because of the roads. And one of the things that you folks don't have on Oahu and are mm -hmm. the fact that we've had subdivisions created before statehood that the county inherited that lacked infrastructure. And so when you talk about medical care, because they lack infrastructure, the roads are so bad that the ambulances and the fire trucks have a hard time getting to the, you know, to, to the injured individual or, or the house burning in time to take care of, of it. Um, one glaring example of that was um, back in the 90s. I don't know if you remember the Dana Ireland case. Yes. Where that this poor woman who was, it took a long time for an ambulance to get to her because the road was so substandard that they didn't know whether or not they could get to her. And when they, they did finally get to her, it took, you know, whereas it takes minutes for an ambulance on a paved road, it took over a half hour to, over a half hour to get to her. And that's just to get through the unpaved portion into a paved road, and then it took another hour to get from the paved road over to Hilo Hospital, because that's how far away that my district is from the nearest emergency room. Even an ambulance on a paved road takes an hour. So on an unpaved road, it takes twice as long, and that's also one of the reasons why I had pushed for my um, Puna ambulance bill because what people don't realize is our ambulances are taking a beating oh, I'm trying sure. to go as fast as they can on these dirt roads where the where the if, if you think the potholes are big in Honolulu <laughs> think about the washboard multiple <laughs> potholes we have here when it's unpaved well, and so our the ambulances don't last as long here. So and so that those are the kind of issues we have. So one of the pushes we've had to increase medical care is telehealth. But telehealth requires high speed internet in order for it to be effective. Well, and, and do one you have of my that? pushes is to try to increase broadband. And right now, you know, we don't have sufficient reach on broadband because it is not cost effective for private companies to to do that. Cost effective? Um, I mean, Hawaiian when, when Telecom people... recently did a huge push to 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 wire up, uh, put fiber optic in a lot of Upper Puna areas, and hopefully that will continue. But Telehealth, in order for that to continue, in order to provide at least a modicum of health care, with um, requires you know requires technology intervention. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, I wanted to talk to you about 
the lava and its effect on your community, the Lower Puna. Okay, we'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I want to know, will you watch my show? I hope you do. It's on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock, and it's out of the comfort zone, and I'll be your host, R.B. Kelly. See you there. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are talking to my new best friend. And all of you know I only talk to best friends. <laughs> this is Representative Joy, I'll get it right, San Buena Ventura, is that correct? That's correct, Marcia. Where, what, where does that name come from? Well, it's um, a saint's name. It's Saint Bonaventure. Those ah. people who lived in mm -hmm. Southern California have seen um, Junipero Serra's um, one of one of his missions is San Buena Ventura over in Lower um, in Southern California. So it's it's the same thing, San Buenaventura. So are you from that part of the world? No, no, no. It's um. So what happened was my my father, um, civil engineer, um, got baptized in a Catholic church in the Philippines, ah. and and that is he has took, taken on his baptismal name of San Buenaventura. Oh, that's really interesting. Tell us now, we want to talk about Puna, and uh, you are the lower Puna. I think we have a map of that part of the Big Island, and the volcano, because you really, that district suffered an awful lot from May until today, really, of, with the eruption of the volcano. So can you tell us about that? Yes, yeah, so what people don't realize, I mean, because the island is so big, how much percentage-wise the lava has inundated, this current eruption has inundated lower Puna area. It's like geographically taking out all of Kailua and Kaneohe, okay? It is sparsely populated, so it's about 800 homes. So it's not as many homes as Ka Kailua and Kaneohe, but it basically took out 25% of geographically of my district. Oh, That's wow. how big a chunk it has taken. So what does that mean? That means on the big island, we lost, we already have um, a pretty low percentage-wise of a real property tax base. That took off $6 million in the real property taxes out of the county budget because that's how many homes and farms and businesses that were destroyed. Um, not only that, it has affected us and the Big Island, you know, economically. There are farms, papaya farms. Most of the papayas exported from the state of Hawaii, the entire state of Hawaii, comes from my district. A lot of papaya farms were inundated by lava. They're gone. They're completely gone. It's unlike a hurricane where you can, or a fire where you can come back and rebuild and replant. When a lava takes over your land, you cannot go back to it and replant because you've got now this 30 feet tall of rock that covers your soil. So you're gone. You, it's, you cannot, that's what the farmers are facing right now. 
they cannot go back to the land and replant. They have to find other farms in order to go into. And they're already stretched thin, as you know. The, the fishing industry, the entire state's fishing, 25% of the catch of the fish that you eat in your homes that is caught from the big island, I mean, that's caught in the state of Hawaii, comes from Pohiki, my district. Okay, so keep on, you're going to start, if you haven't already felt it, fresh fish catch probably have gone up in price because fishermen now have to go into Hilo to get into the fish-rich waters out of, off of Lower Puna. That means more gas, more, um, more supplies are needed. So the fishing industry is also devastated. Orchids, the big island is known, other than the big island, the second um, is known for its orchid growing. We grow most, if not all, of the exported, most of the exported orchids out of the state of Hawaii that gets exported to the mainland elsewhere. A lot of orchid farms were also destroyed by lava. So we haven't really, I mean, we felt immediately the impact when Pahoa businesses were closed, but we're going to, we're, and the tourism has dropped substantially on the Big Island because Volcano National Park, which was a major draw on East Hawaii, stopped, was closed. So there was no tourists going over to, to Puna. So a lot of tourist-dependent businesses were, are, um, are affected. People... The multi-layer problems caused by this lava is substantial because people not only lost their land, people also lost their means of getting, of recovering because they, they can't go back to work. A lot of them were dependent upon going back to work at the tourist industry where um, you know, where they serve as waiters, waitresses, or like Volcano House was closed, and that um, devastated a lot of people. A lot of the Puna businesses that hired, you know, waiters and waitresses and busboys and office managers and restaurant managers ended up closing up shop, at least temporarily. Now they're starting to recover. But it's the multi-headed problem in not only losing, but the prevention of recovery is going to be affecting us for some time to come. And so we start reopening the boat ramp. See, the other multi-headed portion of all of this is we lost our beaches. You folks are used to going to Waikiki or Ala Moana or a beach really easily. But because the big island is so big, we only have certain places we can go to a beach within, within, you know, within an hour or so. We've lost Pohiki. We've lost um, our warm ponds, which is, um, which is a big tourist draw. We've lost a charter school. This is affecting multi-levels of our lives, and um, I'm hoping we would be able to recover, but I don't expect it is the recovery is going to be sometime soon because it is a huge blow economically, but it's also a huge blow to our psyche because we can't, you know, Kalani Honua, those of you who are into yoga or meditation or look at or at least read the yoga journal, know that Kalani Honua is a huge yoga hub, and now it's closed. So it, it was the source of a lot of, um, you know, recreational places. 
is also closed. So it's a loss of businesses. It's a loss of our homes. It's a loss of really our peace of mind. And, um, and, and, and I'm glad it has stopped and we're oh, hoping gosh, to recover. Yes. But um, we can't get lost in the fact that our recovery is going to be slow. And if you talk to the people, they are still people who thought that they bought lava insurance find out that Lloyd's of London is unwilling to pay them. Oh, that, yes, we've um, read about that. That's terrible. When, yeah. Especially and, at the you know, premiums you we, pay. When we got yeah. the Hurricane Lane or Tropical Storm Lane, we find out that the people who bought hurricane insurance aren't going to be able to get money for the flooding because that requires flood insurance, which, uh, you know, wasn't offered. You assume that because it was caused by a hurricane that it would be covered, but it's not. So we got this. It's part of this multi-headed, it, it's, it's a hydra of problems that we didn't know existed that we need to be able to hopefully tackle. Well, now, because the Big Island is so large, are there places that you can relocate some of these farms to? Okay, so that is what we're looking at. Um, if you talk to farmers, it requires, their, um, papaya requires low level. You cannot put them up over in Mauna Kea, so it requires a certain elevation. It requires a certain type of soil, okay? So a lot of places can't have papaya farms. I think I've located some over in, in Hilo, and I know over in Keao, um, shipment farms are, are willing to open up their farms for lease to the papaya farmers. The orchids, again, it re with farming, it requires a certain amount of elevation, temperature, soil, as well as, you know, the acidity of the soil. And all of those things need to come together in order for them to be able to restart. Well, it's, it, this is absolutely amazing. And uh, I am very proud of you and delighted to know you, to get to know you. And honestly, this is just mind-blowing to think that um, all of these things are happening. And I'm listening to you, I'm, I'm feeling absolutely useless that I want to reach out and there's nothing I can do. But, Tell us, will you uh, come back and visit with us again as you move on, as you progress in recovery? Will you talk to us again? Uh, of course, Marcia. And I just want to make sure um, people realize um, when we make a, you know, a special se session ask, the reasons behind it. And I also want to... Another layer to all of this that people on Oahu may not realize is Puna was like the last district of affordable housing for the entire state. So a lot of the people in Puna cannot relocate like to Oahu because they just can't afford it. Oh, we can't afford Oahu either. <laughs> so. <laughs> and, you know, and, and so they put in their life savings into a home in Puna that they could afford, right? And all of a sudden that gets wiped out and if with no insurance and the maximum amount of FEMA is 34000 That's not enough That's not to enough. even buy a lot. No. Well, you know, somewhere now, else. Now, since you're so, a country lawyer, can you sue the insurance companies? Yeah, well, you know, so there has been, there is litigation that's starting to occur. Okay. Um, but a lot of it is but litigation takes a while. It does, but and Puna but needs we can't to be just able, people need to be able to move on. But we, we just lives. can't sit still and, and do. Able, and you need to give people hope okay. too. Yes. And 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 that's why I'm hoping that the special session comes in, because um, you know we need to be able to show that the state is backing the county's recovery. Well, 
we will stay tuned and whatever we can do to assist you in the special session, please let us know. We'll be more than happy to do whatever you think we can do, however we can support you. Well, thank you so much, Marsha. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye, -bye. Aloha. Bye.